Hello, everyone. My name is Mariana Shepard, and I'm the Associate Director of Education and Public Programs at the Contemporary Arts Center in New Orleans. Um, I'm really happy to be here and um, be able to take this opportunity to engage in dialogue about engaging millennial audiences. Uh, so a little bit about uh, the Contemporary Arts Center, um, also known uh, as the CAC, so you'll hear me refer to it as the CAC. Um, uh, but we are a multidisciplinary arts organization founded um, in 1976 by a group of passionate artists. Um, it began as an artist-driven uh, arts organization, um, really when the, the moment across the country to uh, eradicate the walls between visual and performing arts um, was really active. And so the CAC was really the first of its kind um, in the city of New Orleans. Our building is about 100,000 uh, square feet. Uh, we occupy four floors, two gallery spaces, um, two adjoining warehouses. Um, in fact, our warehouses were um, in the news recently. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this um, star athlete, Serena Williams, had her wedding there. Um, <laughs> but it was actually in our space, so we were really happy to host that wedding there. Um, but we do have um, ample amount of space for performing arts as well as visual arts. Um, so for much of CAC's history, our audience has been primarily Caucasian. Um, and so for those of you who have been to our great city of New Orleans, you know that New Orleans is um, a gumbo of ethnicities and backgrounds and cultures. So when setting out to propose a project for the Wallace Initiative, um, as an organization, we thought um, it was very important that our organization represent the city in which we lived and worked. So, our target audience um, for this initiative is young professionals of African descent, ages 21 to 40, have some college education, arts inclined, um, that live and work, live or work um, in New Orleans for over um, six months out of the year. And we specifically focused on this group um, for two main reasons. One, African Americans represent the majority of the New Orleans population. In fact, they make up 51% of the population of New Orleans. And two, because this audience was drastically underrepresented in our current programs, specifically around performing arts. Um, so in the fall of 2015, Planner Zone marketing research firm came in and um, conducted a qualitative, um, I'm sorry, quantitative research study looking at African-American young professionals in New Orleans to get their impressions of the CAC. Six focus groups were conducted um, and guided through discussions about local arts venues, barriers to engagement, arts entertainment preferences, as well as cultural issues affecting arts engagement and perception. When asked about contemporary art, respondents associated with ideas of upscale, high-end, sophisticated, and avant-garde. In their report, the research firm noted that many participants told them that these associations were not necessarily bad, however, their body languages indicated that they were loaded terms. Um, these terms were usually accompanied with air quotes, um, <laughs> gestures, or accents. So if we were to unpack um, you know, these words a bit, the implication here is that contemporary can be a bit um, unaccessible more intellectually demanding, and perhaps expensive, and tends to appeal to a refined upper-class audience, primarily a white audience. So during this time frame, um, the research firm um, helped us to understand the behaviors and attitudes and the barriers to perception for this group. So the, for the purpose of my presentation today, um, I've extrapolated a little bit of key points and takeaways of that feedback um, to hopefully help you in your efforts to engage millennial audiences. So, um, so CAC, we are sort of framing our um, initiative to increase awareness among the target audience with um, these strategic questions. <clears throat> One, can presenting artists of national and local recognition raise awareness and increase ticket sales among the target population? Two, can marketing tactics to encourage word of mouth raise awareness and increase ticket sales among the target population? And three, what is the targeted advertisement and media strategy to better reach the target demographic? And so for each of these, we've um, worked with some, a number of tactics to try to answer these questions. The first one being, can presenting artists of national and local recognition raise awareness and increase ticket sales among the target population? So our target, uh, I'm sorry, our, our tactic for this strategy was to present artists of color. Um, so for example, in our first learning cycles, um, so just a little bit of, of, just to back up a little bit, each year we're, we're looking at um, the season as a learning cycle. So right now we're in our final, final 
portion of our third learning cycle, but on the onset of this initiative, it was our first learning cycle. We presented Tennessee Williams, the mutilated, we remounted it with the local cast. Um, so responding to the feedback in which our respondents mentioned that they would like to see themselves reflected in the work. So a CAC prior to this initiative would have just remounted Tennessee Williams with a you know, majority white cast. But because of this research, we were able to think more thoughtfully about who is actually on stage to be able to attract that audience. Um, another piece of that is the content. So what, what is it that the artists are saying? So it's not just putting people of color, young people of color on stage, but what are the things that they're exploring in that work? And so we made sure that our curator knew that this was the type of work that needed to be represented on our stages. Um, and just to let you know that season was wildly successful. Um, it was probably one of the most successful seasons throughout these three learning cycles. And I'll also add a caveat to that is that I think that part of that was also because the person selecting those shows also fit into our target demographic. So our curator, young African-American woman, and so she's able to speak to that audience but she, because she can speak for that audience. Um, and I like to also think about intentionality too, thinking about what is the intent behind these shows? Like what is the CAC saying when we're presenting specific audiences. So just thinking about that a little bit more. Um, so one of the things that came also out of our market research is thinking about um, word of mouth. How do people know about the organization? What are they saying about the organization? Um, so for those of you who have, been, who have been to New Orleans, you know that we love a good festival. We love a good festival. Anything you love or like, we have a festival for it. <laughs> Strawberries, beignets, crawfish. We also have a fried chicken festival. <laughs> um, so it was no surprise to us that out of the research came that this target demographic sort of, um, sort of thought about their experience, much like a festival. So if you know what a festival experience is like. It includes variety, novelty, social interaction, food and beverage, music, spontaneity, casual atmosphere, drinks, food. And so we started thinking about all of the programmings that are tied to our performing arts. So thinking about engagement, thinking about the wraparound activities. And I want to spend a little bit of time in this area because this is sort of my focus in the organization, um, thinking about our community, thinking about how do we bring these people into our community. So one of the things that we implemented was Second Thursdays, which is an evening at the museum. So on these nights, we um, we bring in artists, we bring in community organizations, partners to really highlight what's happening at the CAC, what's coming up at the CAC. We have a bar on site, we have a food truck on site, we have live entertainment. We really amplify that festival experience and it's working. Um, it's probably one of the areas that we're seeing major changes in. Um, it's a free night, so anyone who comes in, um, they give us their email, they get in for free. Um, and so it allows us to sort of allow them into our doors without any sort of risk. We're breaking down that perception that this space is actually for you. Um, the people that you see whenever you walk into our space are young people. Um, they look like the community. And so there's this relationship that's already established when they're coming into our doors. Um, another piece to that is that the conversations that are taking place on these evenings are in direct relationship to the content that they want to hear about. So for example, a couple weeks ago, not, not weeks, but a couple months ago, we had a conversation um, around New Orleans celebrating its tricentennial. So what does this, the next 300 years of New Orleans look like? So we invited young people, we invited community organizations. These nights are really about the community. So we ourselves aren't really visible. So it's not really us on the mic. This is who we are, we're CAC, you should love us. We're really allowing the community to utilize our space and create those, um, those bridges for interaction and engagement. Um, so again, thinking about what personal relevance means. Um, for, for nearly everyone in our focus groups, <clears throat> it was important that, um, that culture be represented, that thinking about their experience being unique was also um, thought about. So when people come to the CAC, every experience is very different. 
because every performance is different, every exhibition is different. So of course, all of the engagement activities shouldn't sort of be the same experience time and time again. So we really make an effort to really um, amplify that idea of difference and unique. And every time you come here, it's not gonna be like the last time you came here. So there's this, um, this idea of spontaneity and surprise, which then goes back to what we, we found out during our, our, our focus groups. Um, so as you can see, these are some great photos of people enjoying themselves at the CAC. Um, so these nights have really become um, wildly successful, as I mentioned before. And it's really having reverberations around the organization. I'll speak a little bit about the institutional impact in a, in a minute. Um, so our other tactic to encourage word of mouth is we've um, invited a group of about 20 or so community leaders, tastemakers, um, social influencers, that's the new buzzword, social influencers, um, to really act as an internal focus group for us. So these are people who are around the city who are arts inclined, who really fit our target demo or have relationships to our target demo that can inform us in real time about what it is that we're doing right, what it is that we're doing wrong, and how can we make course corrections in the moment. So we meet with them bi-monthly. Um, we offer them tickets to the performances. Um, we give them surveys. <laughs> Um, and then they tell us, you know what? When I went to the CAC, the front desk person, they weren't that really, they weren't that re they weren't friendly with me. The performance, I feel like, you know, we could have used an intermission. Um, I don't think that this artist was the appropriate artist to present this particular work. So all the things that they're telling us, we're able to actually speak to, we're able to talk to, we're able to continue to dialogue, and this idea of constantly making changes so that. We're, we're breaking down those barriers to perception. And in the community, they act as ambassadors for our programs. So we offer them discount codes, we offer them um, a complimentary membership with their um, time served on the, on the committee. Their commitment is a year. Um, and so it's a really, really strong group of people and a really great trade off for us. And it's an area that we feel can have sustainability well beyond the initiative is over. And then the other area um, that we've been testing is around our marketing tactics. And this is the area that we're not quite there yet. We're still working in this area. It's, it's still rough around the edges. Um, so while you know we're constantly building our online presence, um, the engagement isn't there quite yet. So we post all the time. This is what we're doing. This is what we have coming up. But we're not really asking the community, what do you want from us? So like trying to continue the conversation well after the experience is over. And so as we go into this fourth learning cycle, this is an area of focus for the organization, is how can we engage this group online? So research shows us that they're heavy users of social media, primarily Twitter, black Twitter, <laughs> um, Instagram, Facebook. And so that's the area, like I mentioned, we're really trying to hone in on. Um, with regard to, to this initiative. And then the institutional impact. Um, so thinking about how this initiative is primarily focused in the performing arts, it actually has um, implications and has impacted the organization as a whole. So our visual arts programming, although we do curate our shows about two to three years out, our curator is thinking about this demographic as they think about those shows. So. Um, you know, next year we're bringing in Micheline Thomas. Um, and so this is someone who is, um, has a, a huge following within our target demographic. And that decision was due to this research. So how do we continue to expand this engagement far beyond the performing arts? Because like I mentioned, we're multidisciplinary. So it's really having some um, effects there our youth programs as well. So they're taking the format of our second Thursday. So the teen program, they have their sort of night out at the museum <clears throat> with food trucks, not a bar. Um, <laughs> um, and then they actually have a panel conversation on, uh, what is today, Tuesday? Thursday, Sorry, this is our uh, last second Thursday for the season. So the teen program is sort of taking that same shift and it's also being diversified in that way. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, intentionality. So whenever we're thinking about, for example, event rentals, you know, what does that rental look like to the, to the community? 
because for them it's all one CAC, you know, whether it's a paid rental or not, you know, what does that mean? So the fact that we had Serena Williams in our space, that was kind of hot, you know what I mean? And so that again continues to make, make CAC relevant, make it hip, make it fresh. Um, and then our board and staff has been diverse. So our AAC, our Audience Advisory Committee, has also acted as a pipeline to our board. So we have currently three of our past AAC members who are on our board now. So we have that perspective being represented on our board as well as our staff. So we're thinking about what does the curative performing arts look like? What, what does the director of our marketing look like? So again, the impact has been very far. Um, so thank you again for your time. My name is Mariana Shepard. I'm the Associate Director of Education and Public Programs at the Contemporary Arts Center in New Orleans. Well, I think um, CAC has long time wanted to um, continue the tradition of being an organization that's been community focused. Um, and so us coming into this uh, project, wanting to diversify audiences, specifically millennial, um, audiences of African descent um, made sense for us. We're looking at the community being 51% African American. Um, so we wanted to ensure that our organization reflected that demographic. Um, so we at the CAC anticipate this demographic growing. So the CAC is positioned in a very central place of the central business district that has um, an increase of developments happening around it. So these, um, this group of people will be our neighbors very soon. And so we wanted to make sure that we're engaging them early on so they can feel like the CAC is part of their community. And so that's the reason why we wanted to focus on this uh, demographic. So, I think to put it succinctly, because they're the future. I mean, when we're thinking about the United States 20 years from now, 40 years from now, it will be minority majority. And so we wanna make sure that we are putting in the work that's necessary to be able to have those conversations now and then long term. Um, and then these people will be our, our membership base. They're gonna be our deep donors, our upper level membership holders. And so we wanna make sure that we're thinking about them now so that they don't feel like um, they're an afterthought in the future. So we assume that um, the only barrier was that people were not aware of the CAC. And so while that may have been the case for some people, it wasn't the case across the board. So we learned that um, people had very strong perceptions of CAC around us being unaccessible, about us being expensive, about us being um, you know, too sophisticated. And so that was some of the work that we had to do on the onset was trying to debunk those ideas and really break down those perceptions so that people felt like they were included, that the CAC was um, cost, um, it wasn't costly, that, that we were doing the programs that they themselves felt that they could um, see themselves in. I think one of the challenges that we experienced was, um, well, we, whenever we began doing the work, we thought that the changes would be immediate, that we would see the people coming in in droves, and that wasn't the case. And so with this initiative, it's taught us that it's going to take work, it's going to take time, and that we're still in the learning process. So as I mentioned, the CAC is 40 years um, more than 40 years old and so, you know, one, two, three years, you know, is just, you know, moving the needle just an inch in, in, that, in that work. And so one of the things that we are now learning is that, you know, we may see some changes, but we'll see the, the grand change over an extended period of time. So I think we're we're still in that process of figuring out what's working. I think we are learning some things that we feel like, you know, we've, we've figured that part out, but um, there's so much work that has to be done. It's a lot of tweaking still. So for example, um, our engagement part of the project, we, we know that 
our demographic, our target demographic, really enjoys a social experience that involves food, drink, um, networking, live music. We have that part down. Now, how do we transfer that group to become ticket purchasers? We're there, we're, we're trying to figure out that transference part. Um, and so that's, that's the piece that we still are sort of putting things out and you know, throwing things at the wall and still trying to learn you know, what is that thing or those things that will entice people to actually come back to the CAC, purchase a ticket, and hopefully perhaps become members. Some advice I would give to an organization diving into this work is ensure that you have buy-in of the entire organization because you know, an organization like CAC is multidisciplinary. We're not only performing arts, but we're also visual arts. So you want to make sure that the image that's being put out into the community is across the organization, that we're all on the same page, and that we're not just doing you know, one effort in one area and not the others. And so ensuring that your curatorial staff, your development staff, your marketing staff all understand what the purpose and where we're going. Um, I think that's really important. And so whenever someone comes into your institution, you have a holistic or they have a holistic idea of what it is that they're seeing, they're experiencing, and what they're really contributing to. Some helpful tools that organizations can use or resources would be uh, their community. I think if you want to know what the community wants, ask them. So for CAC, we've um, put together an advisory group of young professionals, mostly of African descent, some not, um, who really speak to us in real time about what their experience is like. So these are individuals who are leaders, they're tastemakers or influencers that can speak directly to what are the things that we're doing right? What are the things that we're not quite getting quite yet? And how can we change the perception from their perspective? And that's, you know, that's nothing for us to sort of enlist them. They, they want to give that feedback. They really find value in offering that to a community-based organization like our own. And so I would, I would tell an organization, find out you know, who's in that community, who are the people that you want to invite, and invite them. And it's quite, it's quite that easy. Just invite them and let them speak to you. I think oftentimes we think we know what communities want without even asking them the question. And so I think that in itself is a really valuable um, approach. So the role of our board in this work is they're really supporters of the work that we're doing. Our board um, is extremely supportive of us engaging and diversifying our audiences. In fact, we have some of the board members um, who are prior um, engage in our audience advisory committee and so that voice is represented on our board and we're, con we're in constant communication with them about what is that we're doing, what are the projects that we're doing, what are our learnings, what are the things that we're not quite working um, to understand quite yet and so the board is really um, invested in, in engaging and diversifying our audiences.